Okay. <clears throat> Let's continue our discussion of measurable sets. Um, let me just briefly recall for you. Uh, the end of last time, we discussed some general notions, uh, some some special collections of subsets of R, uh, one of those being an algebra, which is closed under taking complements and taking finite unions. And then we set a collection of subsets of R as a sigma algebra if it's also closed under taking countable unions. Okay? And not every algebra is a sigma algebra. Um, why did we bring all this up? Well, we were in the middle of Discussion, the discussing Lebesgue measurable set. So recall that uh, we say E is Lebesgue measurable if for all subsets of R, A, uh, the measure, the outer measure of A is equal to the outer measure of A intersect E plus the outer measure of A intersect the complement. Okay? So, in some sense, a measurable set is, you know, one that divides sets nicely with respect to outer measure. Okay? Uh, and so, and we denoted script M to be the set of all E such that E is uh, Lebesgue measurable, and I'm going to stop saying Lebesgue measurable and just say measurable uh, from now on. Um, and what we showed was last time we showed that M, the set of measurable uh, subsets of R, do form an algebra. So um, you know it follows from the definition that if E is measurable, then E complement is measurable. But, but we also showed that if I take a finite union of measurable sets, then, uh, or a finite collection of measurable sets, their union is measurable. Okay? And what we're going to do today is we're going to show that um, the set, the collection of measurable, Lebesgue measurable subsets of R form a sigma algebra. So they have this, uh, you know, stronger property. And also that, so, Last time, um, so there's no way to write this in. So maybe not uh, definition, but notation. That B is the Borel sigma algebra, which is, I'll recall, we proved at the end of last time, so we gave this as a, an example of a sigma algebra. Um, this is the smallest uh, sigma algebra containing all open sets. Okay, so any other sigma algebra that contains all open sets uh, contains uh, the sigma algebra B, the Borel al sigma algebra. Okay. All right. Um, so, like I said, our goal uh, for this lecture is we're going to show that uh, this collection of Lebesgue measurable sets is, is a sigma algebra. We're going to show it contains the Borel sigma algebra. And then, um, you know, what is, I mean, I can even state it now. Uh, or at least I'll just say in words, what is Lebesgue measure? It's simply the Lebesgue measure of a measurable set will be um, the outer measure of that set, uh, as long as it's uh, Lebesgue measurable. OK, so let's show uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show that M is a sigma algebra. OK. Now, uh, one kind of. You know, preliminary uh, remark that or, or lemma that we're going to prove is that so this condition three says that uh, you need to prove that every countable collection is closed under taking unions, right? Uh, 
to ensure that an algebra is a sigma algebra. But in fact, you don't have to check it for uh, an arbitrary collection. You really just need to check it only for a countable collection of disjoint subsets. So that's kind of the, the, the lemma that we'll use when we prove that uh, the collection of Lebesgue measurable sets as a sigma algebra um, is the following. So let, so this is general. This has nothing to do uh, necessarily with Lebesgue measure. Um, let A be an algebra in, so again, in here is a natural number. a collection of elements of A, so these are, each of these is a subset of R, then there exists a countable collection Fn of elements of A that are uh, disjoint. So if I take Fn and Fm and N do not equal M, does not equal M, then their intersection is empty such that the union of the ENs uh, equals the union of the FNs, okay? So what does this say? This says if we have, so if we want to verify, um, let, me, let me make this uh, a remark then. What is uh, the conclusion of this? We only need to check this third condition for being a sigma algebra that uh, a countable collection uh, is closed under taking unions. Uh, condition three for sigma algebra uh, for uh, disjoint uh, collections of elements. Okay. Right? This follows immediately from this lemma because if I have any uh, arbitrary collection of elements of the algebra, then their union is equal to a union of elements of A where the union is now over elements that are disjoint from each other. Okay? Um, so this is the point. I only need to check the condition for an algebra to be a sigma algebra uh, by checking that countable unions of disjoint sets uh, remain in the algebra. Okay. Okay. So the proof is not very hard. Um, so let uh, G, let's, let's call it something, G n to be union k equals 1 to n of FK, or of EK, sorry. All right? So, um, then, you know, these are growing because GN contains the first N uh, EKs, and then N plus 1, I tack on another one. So, G1 is contained in G2, is contained in G3, and you know, this is just kind of easy to check, and I'll leave it to you that the union of the ENs is equal to the union of the GNs. Okay? I mean, the GNs are really just, you know, unions of the EKs, finite unions of the EKs. So, uh, you know, this is, this is pretty clear. All right? Right? I mean, you know, if you actually want to sit down and do the argument, every element in G, N, is contained in uh, 
E1 up to EN, so every GN is contained in this union, and therefore the union of the GNs is contained in this union. And then it's easy to go the other way around, showing this union is contained in this union, so that they're equal. Okay? And now I take... F1 to be G1 and F uh, n plus 1 to be F n plus 1 take away F n for n bigger than or equal to 1. Or I should say, sorry about that, that should be G n plus 1 take away G n. Okay? So what is this? I take the first set to be G1, and then F2 will be what's in G2, but not in G1. So then uh, um, you know, what is this, uh, what do we get? We get that the union of any finite guy is equal to, um, in fact, So I mean this is this is pretty clear again because what what am I doing here? G two or F two will be what's in G two take away G one. What's in F three? It's whatever's in G three take away G two, and their union you know is going to be the same as over here because I'm including G one and then and so on. I, ho I hope this is clear. Uh, and in fact, I don't know why I'm writing in. Um, we, in fact, get this union is equal to this union, all right? Um, and again, I, I'm leaving some details out, but you can, you know, check that this union is contained in this union, and then this union is contained in this union, all right, uh, very easily. But I hope, uh, you know, I hope the idea is, is pretty clear, okay? Because you're just, you know, at each stage, you're taking whatever is in this set, um, cutting out what was... Uh, you know, appeared before it, okay, in the sets before it, okay? Okay. All right, so um, now let's go back, <clears throat> back to measurable sets. We're now uh, going to show that, um, well, almost, we are, going to prove that the collection of Lebesgue measurable sets is a sigma algebra. First, we need the following theorem, which is the following. Um, let A be a subset of R, and this is essentially um, the whole game, as we'll see. Let A be a subset of R, E1 up to En. Uh, the big measurable, and not just measurable, but the disjoint measurable sets. So I only have finitely many of them. Then the outer measure of A intersect uh, the union of these guys is equal to the sum, k equals 1 to n, of the outer measure of A intersect EK. All right? Okay. So, um, you know, this shouldn't come as too much of a surprise because this is very close. This is kind of close to saying, you know, uh, um, I should say, um, you know, this is very true if, say, E1 say you just have two sets, 
E1 is E and E2 is E complement, right? Then that's just the definition of being measurable. Um, so, and you build up from that by using induction, all right? That's, that's, that's the basic argument. Again, I'm sorry I keep moving away from the chalkboard because I'm used to lecturing to a classroom even though it's been months now since I've been in a classroom with students so and because I'm a freak of nature who writes with my left hand so I have to write and then do this kind of move but anyways um, so we're gonna prove this by induction so the proof is by induction So uh, n equals 1, that's just one set. This is clear. That's just the, measure, the outer measure of A intersect E1 is equal to the outer measure of A intersect E1. So that's fine. Okay. So I'm going to put a check there without writing anything down. So now suppose, let's label this say, statement by star. Uh, so now let's do the induction step. Induction step. So suppose star holds for n equals m. And what we now want to show, uh, meaning that if I have e1 up to e1 up to em disjoint measurable sets, then uh, star holds. Uh, now I want to show that statement holds for m plus 1. m plus 1. Um, okay, so let uh, e1 up to the m plus 1 be measurable uh, disjoint sets. So each of them, uh, they're pairwise disjoint. Um, then since e m plus 1, is measurable. Um, what do we have? Well, first let me, before I use that, let me just note something. Since uh, EM plus 1 is just disjoint from E1 up to EM, A be a subset of R. We want to verify star for A, so uh, I need to have an A. Uh, so since E K intersect E M plus one equals the empty set for all K equals one up to M, we get that A uh, intersect the sum or the union. I'm sorry, K equals one m plus 1. What is this equal to? Um, or then I intersect that with e m plus 1. This is simply equal to a intersect e m plus 1, right? Because uh, e1 up to e m, these are disjoint. So when I transfer this through, um, so you know, I can write this intersection by bringing this intersect each of these EKs for K equals 1 to M plus 1, and then this is empty when K is not equal to M plus 1, so I just pick up E M plus 1, and, and I get that there. Um, but also, if I look at intersect the complement, what is this? This is equal to now k uh, e k for k going from one to m. 
These are all contained in the complement of EM uh, plus one, right, because they're disjoint. So this is equal to just a intersect uh, union A equals one to M E K. All right? Okay, now, got ahead of myself a minute ago, but now we're at this stage. Since E M plus one is measurable, uh, the measure of A intersect this union, K equals one, M plus one, E K, this is equal to the outer measure of A intersect um, K equals one, M plus one, E K intersect E n plus one plus the outer measure of a intersect union k equals one n plus one uh, e k intersect e n plus one uh, complement. Okay, just using that e n plus one is measurable. And now we plug in what these things are. So this whole thing is equal to A intersect EM plus one. So this is equal to the measure of A intersect EM plus one. And now this whole thing is equal to the measure of A intersect the union only going up to M. And now this is where we use the induction hypothesis, right? Because now we have a union of M disjoint measurable sets. So this is equal to um, plus sum from K equals one to M. Uh, a intersect EK, so this is by our induction hypothesis. And this is, you know, combining these two terms is exactly what we want for n equals n plus one. K equals one, n plus one, outer measure of A intersect E K. All right? And, and that's the proof. Okay, um, so now using this theorem and the lemma before it, we will prove that uh, the collection M of Lebesgue measurable sets is a sigma algebra. We already know it's an algebra up to this point, but we just need to verify it's a sigma algebra. All right, so what's the proof? Now, again, based on this remark here, right, we only need to verify that uh, if I have a countable uh, collection of disjoint, of disjoint measurable sets, then the union is measurable, right? I don't have to check it for every collection of measurable sets, just disjoint measurable uh, sets. Okay, so we just need to check, so we've already checked, it's an algebra, so by the lemma, the first thing we proved during this lecture, uh, we just need to show M is closed under 
taking countable disjoint unions, meaning if I have a countable collection of disjoint measurable sets, I need to show the union is, is measurable. So let E sub n be a uh, countable collection here n is a natural number of disjoint measurable sets. Okay? Um, so we need to verify the definition of, of being measurable, but remember uh, that's just that reduces uh, really to one inequality since one of those inequalities is um, always clear. So let A be a subset of R, and let's denote E to be the union. So what do we need to show? Um, we want to show that the outer measure of A intersect E complement plus the outer measure of A intersect E, E here again is the union, um, is equal to the outer measure of A, but we always have uh, the me outer measure of A is less than or equal to this, so we just need to show this. Okay, um, so let's do this. Uh, let n be a natural number. So, so let n be a natural number by, so since m is an algebra, Uh, this a finite union, n equals 1 to capital N of E sub n, is measurable. And therefore, uh, if I want the outer measure of A, um, this is equal to the outer measure of A intersect n equals 1 to n. E sub n plus the outer measure of A intersect uh, n equals 1 to n, E n complement. Okay? Now, um, this finite union uh, is contained in E, right? E is the, the total union, and therefore, the complement of this finite union contains the complement of E. Okay? So this uh, complement here contains the complement of E, and therefore A intersect this is a bigger set than A intersect the complement of E. So this is bigger than or equal to the outer measure of A intersect uh, union n equals 1 to n, E n plus uh, the outer measure of A intersect E complement. Again, because this finite union is contained in the whole union, so when I take complements, that switches around uh, what's contained in what. So then I get A intersect E complement is contained in A intersect the complement of this finite union. Okay? All right, and that's good. So this has now appeared. We wanted this to be smaller than the... the measure of A here, and now what do we have? We have the outer measure of A with a finite, uh, the, a finite union of disjoint measurable sets, and we can write this uh, using the previous theorem as sum from n equals 1 to capital N outer measure of A intersect uh, E n plus 
you just keep in the second term. Okay? Now this holds for every n, right? n was arbitrary. So I can let capital N go to infinity. Remember, so I've shown that the outer measure of A is bigger than or equal to this quantity here. So I can let N go to infinity to conclude that the outer measure of A is bigger than or equal to sum from N equals 1 to infinity of the outer measure of A intersect En plus the outer measure of the a intersect the complement of the union. Now, remember what we proved about outer measure, that uh, the sum of the outer measures is bigger than or equal to the outer measure of the union. So this thing is bigger than or equal to the outer measure of the union over all n A intersect E n plus A intersect E complement, and this is just equal to plus the outer measure of A intersect E complement. Okay? All right, so we've shown um, that the collection of all the vague measurable subsets of R form a sigma algebra. So let me just, um, you know, I, maybe I should have said this at the start, um, but let me just pause here for a second. And maybe you're wondering, why all this sigma algebra business anyways? What, like, why have I imposed this condition? Am I just making this, this definition up at the, as I go along? Um, now, remember what, but it's kind of a condition that's forced upon us based on our expectations in, in the following sense. Um, you remember one of the properties that we wanted of Lebesgue measure, or measure in general, was that the measure of a countable union of disjoint sets is equal to the sum of the measures, right? And, you know, I stated without proof, but there is a proof in the textbook that, you know, this is not, you cannot have a measure defined on every subset satisfying those properties that, uh, that we outlined. So you have to have some collection of subsets on which uh, you have these properties, that the measure of an interval is the length of the interval, and uh, that's translation invariant, and that the measure of the union is the sum of the measures. That last statement, though, hidden in there, is kind of a, a hidden, there's kind of a, a subtle assumption, right? That if you have a measure defined on some collection of subsets, then that collection of subsets better be closed under taking countable unions, right? If I'm to be able to make the statement that I want that the measure of a countable union of disjoint sets is equal to the sum of the measures, then that hidden in there is that my measure has to be defined for a countable union of measurable sets. In other, in other words, if I have a countable collection of measurable sets, then for the statement I want to even make sense, I should have that the union of this countable collection of measurable sets is contained in the class of, of sets that I'm uh, measuring. All right? And so, you know, that's before, you know, we even discussed uh, outer measure or all that. Um, how you could maybe see coming that we would have some condition like, you know, the, the class of sets that we're going to measure will be a sigma algebra, or, or should be a sigma algebra. It should be closed under taking countable unions, okay? Um, so maybe I was rambling, but uh, hopefully you got something out of that. Okay, so we've shown that the we've shown that the set of measurable sets is a sigma algebra, 
Now what I'm going to show is that it contains the Borel sigma algebra. So remember, the Borel sigma algebra is the smallest sigma algebra that contains all open sets, right? If I have any other sigma algebra containing open sets that contains all open sets, then it must contain the Borel sigma algebra because the Borel sigma algebra is the smallest. Smallest, and I should say, quanti I should quantify smallest. Smallest meaning with respect to inclusion. Okay, if there's any other, uh, you know, if there's any other sigma algebra that contains all open sets, then the Borel sigma algebra B is contained in that sigma algebra. Okay. So, uh, but first, let's prove kind of um, a simpler case. Or what should uh, so let me state this and then I'll explain. For all A and R, uh, the open interval A to infinity is measurable. Okay? So, you know, in the end, we want to be able to show, so we already know M is a sigma algebra. If we can then show that every open set is measurable, then that means uh, that M is a sigma algebra containing all open sets and therefore it must contain the Borel sigma algebra, which remember is the smallest sigma algebra containing all open sets. Um, so to build up to showing that every open set is measurable, let's start with, you know, a very simple type of open set. You know, a half open, uh, uh, or half infinite open interval. Okay, so Let A be a subset of R, and let's write A1 to be A intersect A, interf A to infinity, and A2 to be A intersect the complement, which is just minus fin infinity to A closed. So we want to, what do we want to show? To show that, uh, this set is measurable, we want to show that the outer measure of A1 plus the outer measure of A2 is less than or equal to the outer measure of A, right? Because A1 is A intersect the set, A2 is A intersect the complement of that set, right? Now, if the outer measure of A is infinite, this holds uh, regardless, so... Uh, The outer measure is infinite, done. So suppose the outer measure is finite. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that uh, this uh, sum on the left-hand side is less than or equal to this plus epsilon, where epsilon is arbitrary. Okay, and then we can send epsilon to zero to get the inequality. All right, and this everything will reduce to um, you know what we've done with intervals as you'll as you now you'll now see. So let i n be collection of open intervals. such that, remember, the outer measure of A is the infimum of the sum of lengths of intervals covering A. So uh, such that uh, sum over N, length of I N, is less than or equal to outer measure of A plus epsilon. Okay. Define J in to be I in intersect uh, A infinity, K in to be I in intersect the complement of A to infinity. Okay? Now, 
the union of the JNs, okay, well, first off, let me say, then each of these uh, sets, JN and KN, are intervals. They're the intersection of two intervals, you know, one, one open and one uh, open and the other closed, uh, or empty. Okay? Now, the union of the INs covers A, so if I take the unions of the JNs, this will cover A intersect A infinity. then A1 uh, is contained in the union of the JNs, and similarly A2 is contained in the union of the KNs. And one more thing, now uh, IN is an interval, and it's simple to check since uh, the you know, just based on this being a finite interval, that if I take the length of IN, this is equal to the length of JN plus the length of KN. Okay? So I take each IN and I split it up into two sub-intervals. Okay? They may not, they're not going to be open intervals necessarily. This will be an open interval. This one not necessarily. Um, but the sum of the lengths of these two intervals will add up to the length of the interval i n. Okay? That's clear. So. There's, uh, you like j n and k n will be, you know, including that. Okay, and now we're almost home free. So A1 is contained in this union, A2 is contained in this union. So if I look at the measure of A1 plus the measure of A2, the measure of A1, contained, since it's contained in this union, uh, is going to be less than or equal to the sum of the outer measures of Jn's. And the measure of A2, again, is contained in K, in the union of the KN, so that's less than or equal to the sum of the measures of the KNs. And now bringing these two in, together in one sum over N, and using the fact that this is equal to, so the outer measure of an interval is equal to its length, which we proved last time. This is equal to some uh, length of the IN. And remember, how did we choose the IN? We chose this IN so that the length, sum of the lengths of the IN is less than or equal to the outer measure of A plus epsilon. So I should have uh, added here, let epsilon be positive. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, so I've shown that for arbitrary epsilon positive, this number over here is less than or equal to, I oh, still haven't finished, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is what happens when you get excited. So, and this is less than or equal to the outer measure of A plus epsilon. Okay? So we've shown that for arbitrary epsilon positive, this number is less than or equal to this number plus epsilon. So I can send epsilon to zero to get that the outer measure of A1 plus the outer measure of A2 is less than or equal to the outer measure of A, which remember, that's what we wanted to show.
So we've shown that you know these open intervals from a to infinity are 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 measurable. It's now not. A long trip to saying that every open set is Lebesgue measurable. So theorem every open set is Lebesgue measurable. And thus, the Borel sigma algebra, which is the smallest sigma algebra containing all open sets, is contained in the sigma algebra of measurable sets. So um, so we've shown these types of intervals are open. Let's show finite open intervals are, are also, uh, I mean, we've shown these types of open intervals are measurable. Let's now show that, uh, you know, finite open set or, or finite open intervals are, are measurable. So, um, now we have for all B and R that minus infinity to b, this is equal to the union n equals 1 to infinity of what? Of these, uh, the union of these half closed intervals, which, you know, we can write as the complement of these types of open intervals, right? Now, um, we just showed that these types of intervals are open. I mean, these types of open intervals are measurable. Therefore, their complement is measurable. And the collection of measurable sets is a sigma algebra, so countable unions are also measurable. So uh, we conclude that this guy is measurable. And therefore, remember we, you know, for an algebra, um, it's closed under, or for a sigma algebra, it's closed under taking complements and taking countable unions. But by De Morgan's uh, uh, laws, that means it's also closed under taking intersections. Uh, we conclude that for all A, B, and R, any finite union, I mean, any finite open interval A, B, which is equal to minus infinity to b intersect a to infinity. Uh, this is measurable by what we just proved. This is measurable by the theorem we proved before. And sigma algebras are also closed under taking countable unions. This is just a finite union. So this is also measurable. Now, uh, maybe you covered this in 100B. Maybe you didn't. Uh, it's going to appear on the assignment, but I'll, I'll underline what I'm, what's going to be on the assignment. But since every open subset of R is a countable union of, in fact, disjoint open intervals. Open intervals meaning it could be a finite one, it could be one like that, it could be one like we wrote over there where it's a to infinity. Uh, but every open subset can be written as a countable union of disjoint open intervals. And since open intervals, we've now concluded are always measurable. Uh, that means their union is measurable.
we conclude that every open set is measurable. Okay, so. All right. Um, so we now have uh, a collection that we said are measurable sets. Uh, they form a sigma algebra. They contain um, the Borel sigma algebra, which consists of all, uh, which contains all open sets. Um, so now we define Lebesgue measure. If E is a measurable set, the Lebesgue measure of E is denoted by M of E, and it's just given by the outer measure of E, okay? So, um, you know, like I said, when we first started all this business, um, Lebesgue measure is simply outer measure restricted to a nice collection of, or to a collection of well-behaved sets, okay? And that's, you know, you see that here, is that the Lebesgue measure is nothing but outer measure restricted to those sets which we call measurable. And measurable meant that they had this property that they kind of split sets, uh, you know, evenly with respect to outer measure. Okay. Um, okay. So, immediately we kind of get a, a few simple things. Theorem, if A and B are measurable, and A is contained in B, then the measure of A is less than or equal to the measure of B. Why is this? Again, because outer measure satisfies that, right? M of A is just the outer measure of A, and that's less than or equal to the outer measure of B, which is, by definition, the measure of B. So, you know, the point is, is that Lebesgue measure inherits many properties from outer measure. In particular, we have this, and then we also have, um, since we know uh, so let me make one more. Okay. Every interval is measurable. Uh, let's let's state it this way. If I is an interval, then I is measurable, and the measure of I equals the length of I. All right. So we've shown all open intervals are you know. Uh, measurable, right? That's what we did a minute ago when we showed. Um, uh, so first off, let me not get ahead of myself. If I've shown that every i is measurable, then since Lebesgue measure is just a restriction of outer measure, and outer and the outer measure of an interval is the length of the interval, this is immediate, right? So I just need to verify that every interval, right, is measurable. Now we've shown every open interval is measurable, but you know from there it's not uh, you know it's not difficult to to get that every interval is measurable. So um, for example, if I take a closed and bounded interval, this is equal to what is this equal to? This is equal to b infinity complement intersect minus infinity A complement, okay? So B infinity complement gives me B to infinity including B, right? The complement of minus infinity to A is 
a to infinity, including a, and their intersection gives me ab. Now, open intervals are measurable, therefore the complement is measurable. So each of these things is measurable, and therefore their intersection is measurable. So that's measurable. Okay? And it's the same game with, uh, you know, if I take away one of these guys. All right? Except now, um, you know, we would use kind of a trick like that. So let me do one of them. Um, let's say we look at A, B. Well, I mean, I don't think we even have to do anything like that. Let's say I, I look at something like this. Um, this is equal to B intersect um, complement, okay? So a half open interval, including A, not including B, is equal to minus infinity B intersect minus infinity A complement, right? Because then this gives me A to infinity, including A. And this is measurable, this is measurable, the complement's measurable, and therefore the intersection's measurable. So this is measurable, and uh, those are the only two examples I'm going to do. You can, and basically by taking the complements of these, you get the, the other types of intervals, all right? So, you know, this is a good one because this is one of the properties, remember, that we wanted of measure. You know, we at least wanted to be able to measure intervals. And uh, we wanted the measure of an interval, or at least the Lebesgue measure of an interval, to be um, the length of that interval. Okay? And now, uh, let's verify that other condition that we wanted, that uh, the measure of a countable disjoint union is the sum of the measures. So, suppose uh, EN is a countable collection of disjoint measurable sets. Then the Lebesgue measure of the union is equal to the sum of the Lebesgue measure of uh, the sets. Okay? Now this, you know, we don't get, uh, we have one of the inequalities here or we always have this is less than or equal to this uh, simply because that follows from outer measure. Remember, outer measure satisfied this with an inequality there with m star and m star, okay, but not equality. Specializing to these well-behaved sets gives us equality, as we'll see, okay? Um, all right, so... Uh, let me just reiterate that we do have one, and we'll prove this by showing one is less than or equal to the other and vice versa. Uh, we always have this is less than or equal to this um, because of outer measure. Um, so first off, we know that we have this countable union is measurable because M is a uh, sigma algebra, we showed that already. And therefore, the measure of the union is by definition equal to the outer measure of the union, which is less than or equal to the sum of the outer measures of the ENs. And remember, these are all measurable, so this is by definition the outer measure is the measure. Okay, so this is what I meant by we always have one inequality. Or one, we already have one side of this inequality uh, from outer measure. So now we just need to show um, the opposite inequality. And 
can now show uh, some n measure of e n is less than or equal to. Okay. So, um, how do we show this? Uh, let n be a natural number. Then, uh, what is the measure of uh, a finite union of these guys? Well, you know, I'm I can write this also as the measure. So this is uh, measurable. And therefore, I can write this as, in fact, R intersect. This is kind of a stupid way to write it. But I'm just doing it this way so that it looks like something we've already proven, right? Um, you know, earlier we proved that for measurable sets, disjoint measurable sets, um, the outer measure of a set intersect a finite union of disjoint measurable sets is equal to um, the sum of these measures. So, and this is equal to E sub n, and the outer measure of a measurable set is, by definition, again, the measure of the set. So this is equal to n equals 1 to E sub n. OK? So what we've shown is that, in fact, for a finite disjoint union, the measure is equal to uh, the sum of the measures. I mean, we already did prove that, except with an A there. Um, but this gives us the opposite inequality once we realize that we have this sum, which is equal to the measure of and which is less than or equal to the measure of the big total union, right? Because this set is contained in, the, in this set, right? So what I have is that uh, n was arbitrary. I have that that thing on the left-hand side is less than or equal to this thing on the right-hand side, okay? For arbitrary n. So now I let n go to infinity. to conclude that uh, as desired. Okay? So this is, you know, that other property that we wanted, that the, the measure of, of a disjoint union is the sum of the measures. Now, there was that last property we wanted that, um, you know, measure is translation invariant. That'll be uh, in the assignment. So, so let me state it here. So what you'll prove in the assignment is if E is a measurable set and X is in R, then the shift of this set, X E plus X, which is um, you know, the set of all Y plus X, such that y is in E is measurable, and the measure e of E equals the measure of E plus x. Okay, so this will be in the next assignment, which will be assignment, I think, four. which is the third property that we desired. Okay, so uh, Lebesgue measure, which is just outer measure restricted to um, the class of measurable subsets, which is a sigma algebra, satisfies the three, you know, kind of major things we wanted of a measure. You know, unfortunately, the measure is not defined on all subsets, but, you know, it's defined on a, a, a large class of, of 
a very rich class of subsets of real numbers because it contains open sets, closed sets, and like I said, you know, sigma algebras are closed under taking countable intersections and complements, so you could take a collection of open sets and take its intersection, which is not necessarily an open set, uh, but that would be in the sigma algebra, and then you could take a countable union of those types of sets and still remain in the sigma algebra, and then you could take complements of those types of sets and stay in the sigma algebra. So like you know, my instructor said, if you can write down the set, chances are it's measurable. Um, so one last theorem we'll prove uh, about measure, and then we'll call it a day, uh, and, and call it for you know, the theory of measure by itself. Um, then we'll move on to measurable functions. Um, and then Lebesgue integration of measurable functions um, is the following, if you like, continuity of uh, measure, which is the following. So suppose EK is a collection of measurable sets such that E1 is contained in E2, is contained in E3, and so on. Then um, the measure of k equals 1 to infinity of EK this is equal to limit as n goes to infinity of the measure of k equals one k equals n of e k, which equals limit as n goes to infinity of the measure of e n. Okay. Now, uh, you know. I just need to show this is equal to this, uh, and that's what I'll show, is that this is equal to this. Um, the fact that this is equal to this follows from the, you know, the assumption that they're nested, right? Uh, E1 is contained in E2, is contained in up to En, so the union is equal to En, okay? So uh, I'm just going to show that these two things underlined in yellow are equal to each other. And then the fact that this is equal to that is just follows from this assumption here. Okay. All right. So for the proof, we're going to do this trick again, where um, we're going to write kind of the union, this this countable union, as uh, a union of disjoint uh, sets. So we let f. 1 equal to be E1 FK plus 1 equal to EK plus 1 take away EK for K bigger than or equal to 1. Um, and let me just remark this is equal to EK plus 1 intersect EK complement since they're nested, right? Since E1 is contained in E2, is contained in so on, all right? Um, and note that since the EKs are measurable, this is measurable, this is measurable, its complement is measurable, the intersection is measurable. So each of these are measurable. Then uh, FK is a disjoint collection of measurable sets and for all n n if I look at the union k equals 1 to n of fk so how am I building you know these guys I take f1 to be e1 f2 is going to be e2 take away whatever was already covered in e was already contained in E1, 
E3 is, I mean, F3 is whatever E3 is, take away everything that was already appearing in E2. So you can check that the union from k equals 1 to n of Fk is equal to En. All right? And, you know, that's, and therefore, uh, you know, also that the union is equal to this union. Okay. And now we conclude that if I take the measure of k equals 1 to infinity of Ek, this is equal to, um, you know, this is equal to this union here, which is a union of disjoint uh, measurable sets. So this is equal to the sum k equals 1 to infinity of the measure of f sub k, which is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity k equals 1 to n measure of f sub k. And again, this is a, if you like, I can rewrite this as limit as n goes to infinity, this finite uh, sum of measures of these disjoint sets as the measure of k equals 1 to n of fk, which equals, um, as we noted right here, where, 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 there, is equal to the measure of en. Okay. All right. So that takes care of the definition of Lebesgue measure. Next time we will define uh, Lebesgue measurable functions, um, which, you know, in some sense are in a certain sense, so with respect to integration, the analog of continuous functions. So continuous functions um, have the property that if I have an open set uh, in the target, or in the range, so not the range, but in the target, so if f is a function going from x to y, if I have an open set in y, then the inverse image of that open set is an open set in x. Um, measurable functions will be similar to that except now with measurable sets, but not quite. Uh, we're not going to ask that they take Lebesgue measurable sets to Lebesgue measurable sets, but uh, Borel measurable sets to the inverse image should be a Lebesgue uh, measurable set. All right, we'll, uh, we'll stop there. <laughs>